You are listening to MSP 1337. I'm your host, Chris Johnson, and I'd like to thank you for joining us today. Uh, First and foremost, I'd like to thank our sponsor, MSP Ignite. MSP Ignite offers a peer group experience that is unique to managed service providers in the technology industry. If you are serious about implementing a model for success through sharing and collaboration of best practices, this is the best way to do it. Head on over to msp-ignite.com to get more information. All right, on to the show. Welcome everybody to this episode of MSP 1337. I'm joined this week by Jessica Milheiser of J Mills Consulting. Welcome, Jess. Hey, Chris. Thanks for having me. Can I call you Jess? I've called you Jess for I don't know how many years. I don't know if that's appropriate for professional discussions. (laughs) Actually, I prefer Jess, but okay. that, Jessica's fine. Either All way. Right. I'll call you Jess because otherwise it's like multiple syllables and then we'll go off on uh, I'll get a whole tangent. Away. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So um, Jess, we talked before we got on the show, before the, the recording started, the on air, if you will, yes. about why, why do I want J Mills Consulting on a cybersecurity focused podcast and It all stemmed from an episode we did a couple of weeks ago that was specifically about governance. And I've gotten tons of feedback from the listeners that were like, we want kind of more of that or a better understanding of like where to get started in this sort of governance space. Cause we know Mm. no one wants to write policies. Mm. No one, no one likes to talk about documentation other than to say they have it, right? They have it. We got, oh, we got lots of documentation. It's all upstairs, all in my head. Is it organized? Is it written down? (laughs) Or, or as you said, can I just get a table of contents? Yes. The table of contents. (laughs) It, it, and it's like, it's celebrating the little wins. Like you give me two blank reams of paper with a solidly written table of contents of where I might find stuff. And mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like on cloud nine. I don't even care if I turn to blank pages. I'll just be like, oh, that was a mistake. This, <laughs> this can't be true. This table I need of to go to page perfect. 42 to look at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so one of the things that um, we run into all the time is the idea that they have all the evidence Mm -hmm. to prove to prove cybersecurity is actually taking place in the organization, Mm -hmm. but they don't understand the difference between hunting and gathering. So they just Mm -hmm. assume like, here's access, good luck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so I thought we would just tee this off. Like you've made it clear that you have really three kind of main focus sort of seg. Yeah, I kind of like, so basically JMOS Consulting focuses on daily business operations. Right. And I'm finding that a lot of people actually don't know what that means, but that's basically like your way of doing things. How do you get from A to B to C within your company? And do you have procedures for these things? Do you have them written down? Uh, Do you have like tabs or folders? Like, are you organized in a way so that information is able to be found quickly and easily? Because at the end of the day, if you don't know where to find something to reference, uh, you're going to struggle to figure out. Or you create it again. Yes, exactly. So it's extra work. So it's all about, for me, it's all about efficiency. How can I find what I need quickly and easily? So you start... You kind of run the gamut with this though, right? So you, you're willing to, uh, uh, I have an idea, I'm an entrepreneur and helping mm-hmm. me sort of get that uh, vision casting and some of that initial pieces all the way through to my operations manual and employee handbook type yes. stuff. Where, yes. where, does, where does J Mills Consulting stop? Like, like, I don't mean stop as in you wouldn't continue to work with a client, but like- yeah. Where do you see sort of the edge of sort of your comfort zone on the consulting that you're providing your clients? That's a great question. I would say like a lot of the clients that I work with now, like one of them, um, I basically, she branched out on her own and she was like, Hey, I need your help. And so we've basically built her business from the ground up. Okay. And what that means is figuring out what software system she needs, figuring out how she wants to book and schedule clients, figuring out what policies she wants to have be applicable to her business at this time. Gotcha. I have a, I have another client that's sort of been in business for 20 years, but she's one of those gals that has everything in her head. So she's like, well, I know how I want to do things, but nothing's written down. So basically I've been helping her kind of 
you know, get organized, write the things down, and then compile the documentation for future reference. And I would say, you know, to answer your question, I haven't decided where I want to stop. Like, obviously, like HR, that's not sure. super my thing, like right. accounting and stuff. That's not really my thing. My real focus is just getting your business running, getting it up off the ground if you're new, getting you organized and on track if you've kind of been in business for a while, and essentially just coming back to those fundamentals of how you run your business. What are your systems? What are your procedures? And what is your way of doing things? So not, not that there's a cookie cutter model to this. Oh my God. Uh Oh, Oh, are we here? Oh my God. I hit a button on accident. You're fine. This is (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Which button did you hit? Cause I think the on off button. That's, that's pretty serious stuff. Uh, so that's, that's one of the fundamental items that you need to cover, like the on off switch. Indeed. I think I that's kicked... the pre intro to your table of contents. I kicked it on accident. I can, I can, well, it worked fine. It worked out. Okay. Uh, so, so I, I, what comes to mind is what you're describing for me is <laughs> funny. You, you hit the power button or the reset button. You made me think about like, okay, I've been running my company for say five years. Mm-hmm. And I did a very bad job of, say, documenting all that stuff. But I managed to get accounting in place. I can run Mm -hmm. payroll. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe I've got some of the core software systems in place Mm because maybe I've done this before. Sure. (laughs) But when I go back to the fundamentals part, what are the fundamentals? Because I think think if we can establish for our audience what the fundamentals are, Mm -hmm. I think we'll find that most of the listeners have three or four of those done really well yeah, or, or, or well enough to not necessarily need to be revisited, but Mm -hmm. then the rest of them, it's like, oops, I'm paying for what monthly, or I didn't know that that tool that I have does those, do those things. Mm -hmm. Um, How do you, how do you go about sort of the, the reset? So I guess what I would say is I would just take a look at your company as a whole and just be like, go back to the super, super basics and look at your, essentially your business identity. Like what's your mission statement? What are your core values? What matters to you? Who are you as a business and a company? Okay, great. That's probably step one to make sure that you're still aligned with what you've written down previously or make edits to those things to make that, make it relevant for now. Then who I was, who I am. Exactly. Exactly. Um, And then, because those things are truly going to help you create your path to move forward. Mm -hmm. So like, as you make business decisions, as you make changes, as you grow, as you bring on a team, come back to those things. Do these things align with who I am as a business? So I think having a really strong business identity is crucial to staying true to who you are and to growing your company um, as you move forward. I would say the next thing is take a look at your, your software systems mm-hmm. or your, your current policies and procedures. Whoa, are whoa, you whoa, st- whoa, whoa, whoa. Current policies and procedures. Well, okay. Maybe we're getting a little ahead of the game. Okay. <laughs> but, okay. So then take a look at like, you want to do like a financial audit. Okay. Look at what you're using, software uh, whatever you're kind of using banking, payroll, things like that. Take a look at those and make sure you're a using them appropriately and B that there is no overlapping. Cause you want to cut funds where you don't need to be spending it. Right. And even if you don't want to, I mean, if you ever decided to sell your company or you're looking to hire somebody, or maybe you mm-hmm. want to put more money in for the rainy day fund. Mm-hmm. It, it's really hard to have conversations like that when you're like, I have two accounts for Netflix. Like, yeah. Yeah. And I would think include like even personal stuff. Like if you kind of have like a personal professional overlap on certain things, like take a look and just making sure, just make sure that you're not spending unnecessarily. Yeah. I call it the spend twice challenge. Cause like, Mm -hmm. so I do dip a lot. I dip a lot. That does not come out right. (laughs) If, if I think about like consulting and, and my, personal life and consulting, they often bleed together, right? I can go from a conversation with a friend at the bar 
to a conversation that's work related. And we've just, you know, scoped out, like I need to go on site and help them solve some technology problem. Yeah. That started out as a personal expense. It can easily turn into a work expense. The right. caveat though is don't do it twice. Like don't right. track it twice. Don't spend it twice. Like mm-hmm. that's not hard to do if there's an overlap in that, you know, you don't have necessarily a separate set of books because mm-hmm. your, your business is almost a quality of life business. Yes. yes. And I find that a lot of the people that I work with, those are their businesses. They are lifestyle businesses. Sure. Um, and I Which think, I think they all start that way, right? I don't think you can separate True lifestyle business from startup business in the True. beginning. So, yep. so I was going to, so just throw, throw, throw a wrench in it and you're consulting with people. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you see like as a, as a lifestyle company matures and they realize mm-hmm. they either want to stay on the path they're on mm-hmm. or they, they're taking a turn. They're like, Hey, I'm going to hire somebody. We're going to make mm-hmm. this bigger than, than me. Or, yeah. or my lifestyle mm-hmm. is that, is that a change in the consulting for you? Or is it more of like, you're, you're, you're kind of back to that whole, Hey, before we do this, let's do the reevaluate and make sure that we're still in alignment with what we set out to do in the beginning. Well, it's funny because a lot of the people that I work with are in a position where they kind of want to at least have a team. I mean, you can still yeah. be a lifestyle business, sure. but have a small team sure. and you know, that's totally fine. So it kind of, again, a, coming back to the basic fundamentals, figuring out what your vision is for your company. Do you want it to stay chill and Mm -hmm. intimate and kind of small, or do you want it to grow? So thinking about what your one, three, five-year plan is for your business, where are you trying to take it? Because that will also um, kind of alter the changes that you make as you kind of move through it whether you want to grow and expand like pretty immensely or whether you want to kind of stay intimate and small. So those are questions that you need to have a strong handle on that kind of circle back to your business identity. So this kind of, so we were, we were talking about like, what are the fundamentals? And I think you hit some of them really, really well, like my identity. um, And it could be obviously a personal identity or more of like a a company brand identity. Mm -hmm. But you, you said a couple of things like, you know, thinking about, where you're going, uh, one of the fundamentals that I would, that you mentioned the, the one to three to five year plan, mm-hmm. man, I don't know how many businesses I've talked to, whether it's, we're focused on cybersecurity or financials or whatever it might be yeah. ever really say, well, in my five-year plan, yeah, they're like in my tomorrow. <laughs> it's really hard for people. I think, especially in small business, small business to think ahead. Because I think a lot of people get stuck in the day to day and they're in the grind and they're just trying to survive and they're just trying to make it to the next day. But I think in order to really succeed as a small business owner, you need to know where you want to go. Um, You know, I know, I know a Joshua Smith that I don't know how many times he would say to me, are we looking at the forest through the trees? Are we looking at it from, you know, the 10,000 foot level and can see the edge of the forest? Yeah. And so what will help you kind of pull out of the day to day is coming back to those pesky policies, procedures and manuals. You know, if you have a good handle on how you're doing things, that kind of removes you from having to like put out fires as, you know, as you guys kind of say, and just be able to be a little bit more strategic in your thinking. So, so with that being said, kind of circling back to, you know, I, I always want this to be about cybersecurity because uh, I mean, otherwise what pot, what podcast do I actually have? Holy it, moly. I mean, it, 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 <laughs> you, every time you say policies and procedures, the first thing that goes through my head is cybersecurity and the frameworks and all the policies that come with it. But yes. the reality is if I start writing policies today against mm-hmm. any of those frameworks, yes, 90% of my work is going to fall flat because it will say things like, what is your business continuity plan? What is your incident response plan? What does mm-hmm. your employee handbook look like? Where mm-hmm. are the acceptable use policies, access control policies? And, and, and people get pretty bent out of shape when I start saying access control. And I'm like, what about the door right. to the building? And they're like, well, that's not really a cybersecurity thing. I'm like, well, no, it's just a different category yeah. of security. That's not cyber per se, but my cybersecurity policy had better reference that policy. And so I I asked this sort of like really long question to ask, like, what's sort of in your mind for an SMB, whether they're started out or they're kind of doing the reset, 
Do you have a list of policies that you'd say these are the must haves and then anything kind of beyond that sort of like extra? So I will first and foremost say that I am not in the cybersecurity world. Understood. However, (laughs) I think for any business who's really trying to, you know, hone in on their own and really kind of move forward, you need to have policies around, you know, uh, how you talk to people, how you go through emails, who has access to any files or folders that contain documentation regarding your business. Um, Are there people that you want to have more access than others? Is there a universal folder? Like, so for one of the companies I work with, we have like a master folder document that contains literally everything for the company, how to do all the things. And only the admin team has access to that. So just kind of thinking about who has access to what and what is included in there, but then also like outwardly, like how do you handle certain client calls or how do you handle certain interactions or how do you handle people who are upset or how do you handle payments and bookings and refunds and kind of the basics of running your business? Man. I, I have to say, I, as many of those things as you spouted off just then, yeah, none of them were, well, I shouldn't say none of them. A lot of them aren't ones that I thought about as being important. Like how do we handle emails? Who has access to specific, and don't get me wrong. I know that there are folders that I don't have access for everybody into. I, I get that, but to actually have a policy that's written that says, Hey, if you're in XYZ department, you only have access to these documents. I think lots of us have maybe, um, even if it's unwritten, like least privilege access based on job role, we might have done a good job with that. That's more of the cybersecurity talking. Mm-hmm. But then I think about it, I'm going, but did I really write this policy from the perspective of expectations of my business? Or did I write these policies based on an expectation of cybersecurity? Uh huh. Okay. So if I wrote it the way, right. If I wrote it the way you're suggesting, Mm -hmm. I'm already two thirds of the way there with the way I'm suggesting, right? Mm -hmm. So like one solving a fundamental security problem, Mm -hmm. you're solving a business problem, right? Like Mm -hmm. I don't need Joe in, in uh, sales to have access to like the HR folder, right? Like, I mean, there's some things in there that would suddenly be problematic. Yes. A hundred percent. But I don't have a policy for that one. Yeah. Okay. Right. Because, because it's not because I don't trust Joe right. necessarily. Right. It's more of like, if I remove the temptation or I remove the access, I'm also reducing his, his liability. I'm reducing yes. his uh, exposure to things that maybe uh, put him at risk because yes. they're just there. So like mm-hmm. if he were to have a security compromise mm-hmm. and his privileges allowed access to say the financials folder or our intellectual property folder, even though he has no reason to ever be in those folders, yeah, he's the, then he can still be the reason that all of that failed. So but- what's interesting is you're kind of actually going into this area that I have experience with, but I'm actually thinking about maybe getting certified on, but essentially risk management and thinking about how that relates to different liabilities within the company, cybersecurity, or just a general small business. Every company is going to have risks and liabilities and holes. And it's just trying to figure out, A, can you mitigate it? Mm -hmm. B, can you completely get rid of it? And if you can't, how do you manage the potential risk that is there? And yeah. Thinking about Joe. It. <laughs> right. And yeah. thinking about Joe, you know, Joe's a great guy, but he doesn't need to have access to right. this. It's just not relevant. So to your point, and we could take risk out for a minute, because and if you do decide to go down uh, risk management, let me know. I can I can find you some good resources because I'm always cool. looking for good for good risk uh, management people. Yeah. Uh, this but this takes me back to if I hire Joe, I don't want to sit down and have a conversation with Joe about risk and how I'm not giving him access to certain folders. That sounds like right. a very boring conversation yes. to have that leads itself to more questions than I have answers for. Yes. However, in, from a culture standpoint, if I have the appropriate policies or documentation to go with it, mm-hmm. I'm setting them up for success with what they need access to as yes. opposed to worrying about what they have access to. That is correct. And I think that's what you want to focus on. And so a lot of the gals that I work with, you know, helping them create 
their training manuals and their yeah. employee handbooks and their operations manual. It really comes down to what does this person need to be able to do their job? What references, what resources, what access, how can you, like you said, set them up for success to do their position in a, in a, in a good, in a good way. I, I think, I think what's interesting about this entire conversation has really been, if you set a good foundation mm-hmm. for how we want the business to look, feel, and operate, mm-hmm. then all of the things that I spend, you know, countless hours in the podcast talking about from a cybersecurity standpoint, mm-hmm. I, I'm in a position to be successful in the execution of those things because I've built a foundation to layer that stuff on top of. Exactly. Huh. Yeah. And I think it also, like you said, a great word, you know, execution. And I think that is what a good business is built on a solid foundation of the policies and procedures, and then an actual, like just really solid execution, because ultimately your system, your, your, your business operations is again, the way you do things, it's your systems, but it's being able to have anybody do it in a very consistent way. Are you producing the same results? Is anybody stepping in here into this role able to do the same job in the same way? Sure. So, so full disclosure. So obviously, you know, Josh Smith very well. Yes. And you know, the historical of untangled solutions. I do. I would suspect that you could probably put your finger on one of the areas that made our company struggle as much as we did is tied to we did not do any of the things we've spent the last uh, 30 minutes talking about. Yeah. And I think at least not well, it's, it's tough because you kind of get in this position where you're doing the day to day, you're trying to survive, you're trying to thrive, you're trying to, you know, do your thing. But if you lose sight of building those foundations of building those fundamental operations, it's, right. it becomes difficult to kind of grow. And I think you guys were starting to grow, but yeah. you were kind of growing beyond your foundational capacity. We didn't put the foundational components in for the capacity to be what we wanted it to be. So yeah. I, I go back. So, so Josh and I had probably been working together at real-time support for about a year, I think. Mm-hmm. When we met at, I think it was Rock Bottom Brewing in downtown Long Beach. And our conversation was, no one cares that we're here. Mm-hmm. Our, our boss um, doesn't care that we're at Rock Bottom Brewing with his platinum card, Amex platinum card, mm-hmm. doing whatever we want mm-hmm. because he is banking on our productivity and the outcomes that he gets from us with our clients. The problem that we had was our success was solely defined by the clients that he wanted us to serve, which were not great clients to have Mm. in the first place. And we said, we can do this better. We'll start our own company. Yeah. Yeah. We did all that, you know, get the legal zoom, sign the paperwork, 50, 50, whatever. Yeah. And then we were going a hundred miles an hour with some amazing clients. Yep that we fundamentally failed in the beginning because we didn't have the things that you're talking about. How do we take client calls? How do we take payments? That was like one of the most challenging things we had in the first few years we were in business. We're like, uh, we don't have a reseller's permit, so we can't sell you a quarter of a million dollars worth of equipment. Um, hold on, let yeah. me make a phone call. Yeah. Right? Reactive. Like it was constant reactive. And to your point, our, our mistakes early on had we sat down with, you know, J Mills Consulting, hey, we probably could have reset that really fast. Yeah. And doubled or tripled where we were at as a company in the course of probably 24 months. Easily. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and to just like quickly interject, you know, thinking about essentially it comes down to being organized and thank you. Just, being organized and knowing what your needs are. And you you said something very interesting, you know, certifications, like some businesses and companies will need certain insurance or certifications to be able to perform the job that they're trying to perform. So just knowing logistically, what do you need to do your job? 
which then lends itself to all of the other things that you layer on top of the work function become mm-hmm. more of that. I don't want to say it's a form or a function over form, but if you don't get the function part right at the beginning, mm-hmm. the form doesn't ever take hold in a way that other people see it and go, this looks good. Therefore it must be good. I want mm-hmm. to do business with you. Yeah. Um, I, I think, and I think in, in the space of like, if you are organized, mm-hmm. Well, that, that is function and form and it's at its best together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't ever have to explain that to anybody, right? Like if I show you the table of contents and it covers the basis of Mm -hmm. what you expect to see from my company. Yes. We don't have to have another, like it can be blank paste, paste, (laughs) it can be blank reams of paper, right? Because Mm -hmm. why would I lie with an amazing table of contents? I wouldn't. It doesn't make sense because I've put the effort in to have the table of contents and you don't get to a strong table of contents if you haven't already built the content. Yes. You have to have that kind of forethought and just be like, this is what I can do for you. This is how I can help you. This is why you need my service or protection or security or, you know what I mean? Again, coming back to a solid business identity. The foundations, the fundamentals, the, uh, I mean, just throwing out words here, like just the the Soros basics, throw Um, it out there. So, so just, I mean, like, uh, as we're wrapping up here, where can people find J Mills consulting? Uh, well, I have a website and it's called www.jmillsconsulting.com. And you can you find feel the on- WW in there. I mean, that's like literally like talk radio right there. If you've got the WWW <laughs> added into listing your website, we know we are currently on a talk radio show. <laughs> Listen, I've thought about doing radio. I think All it'd right. be great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm also on LinkedIn. Um, you can email me at jessica at jmailsconsulting.com. Um, I'm happy to help. You know, I'm finding that I'm really, really loving this type of work. Like I'm super passionate about it. And it's an area that a lot of people need help with and don't be ashamed of that. You know, everyone's got their thing, but I love it and I'm really thrilled about it. And I'm looking forward to helping more businesses. So I want to just throw out there. I want to throw a quote from Jess's website. Cause I will tell you that I was, I follow you on LinkedIn. Um, I've known um, I, while I haven't known you as well as, uh, as, as Josh, Mm-hmm. Um, I, I have over the years, you know, get glimpses here and there and always wondered what you were going to do next. And I, I love this quote. It says, and I quote right here, I help small businesses bring their vision to life by getting organized and streaming their day to day. For those of you listening, I know every single one of you is challenged with this. So whether you're engaging with, with J Mills Consulting or not, this is not an infomercial. Nope. Think about your basics. Get back to that stuff we've been talking about week to week. Like, hey, cybersecurity is like one of the most important things you will deal with in your organization today. Mm -hmm. But I would argue, and just as is my witness, you will not do a successful job at cybersecurity policies, procedures, compliance if your fundamentals aren't dialed in. 100%. I concur. It has been great to have you on MSP 1337. Thanks, everybody, and have a great week. Thank you so much. That was fun. Cool.